Hi, my name is Catherine from Crime Psych. I recently wrote a guest blog for Adam Lloyd, who hosts the UK True Crime podcast. Um, he asked me to do a short blog to tell people a little bit about who I am and what I do. So I called the blog, I swapped my motorbike for a keyboard. And just to introduce myself to those of you who don't know me, we'll get the formal bit done and out of the way first. My name is Dr. Catherine Hughes. I am an investigative psychologist, which is really difficult to say, um, which is also known as a criminal psychologist. I completed my PhD with Professor David Cantor and I examined the psychological aspects of propensity towards crime. I worked with Professor Cantor from around 2005 onwards and I've worked on numerous projects um, and so I decided once I'd completed my PhD to set up uh, this business because I wanted to share my knowledge with the world. I also wanted to make aspects of criminal psychology easily available to people in general without the hefty price tag of years at university. OK, so as far as true crime goes, my sister thinks I am a sicko, <laughs> as I'm sure some of your friends do. I've been interested in true crime for as long as I can remember. I'm fairly sure it started with the books Silence of the Lambs and Red Dragon by Thomas Harris. Um, but before I even started my career in this business, I'd watch these true crime documentaries, I'd watch all sorts of TV and films on it. And I used to watch Professor David Cantor commenting on some of these things as well as other people. And they talk about various criminals. And I, by the end of the programmes, I always had more questions than the psychologists or criminologists had actually answered on the, the programme. Before I started this career, I used to work as a full-time motorcycle instructor. I had a motorcycle accident in 2001-ish, I think, um, which resulted in me having a spine fusion. And I could hardly walk, so I couldn't do that job anymore. I couldn't ride bikes every day. So I decided to go to college and do an access to higher education course in psychology and criminology because I'd always been interested in those subjects. I fell in love with the subject and studying again almost straight away. I was never really any good at school when I was there simply because the subjects didn't interest me so I didn't put much effort in. I applied for university and then I almost immediately applied to be an intern for Professor David Cantor. That's how I went on to do a PhD with him. When I worked as an intern, I'd work really long hours for no pay, but it did mean that I got to work on loads of really interesting projects. And I was even able to go and interview prisoners um, about their life and about the offences that they committed. I used to organise and speak and speak at different conferences. I researched numerous subjects within criminal psych and investigative psychology. And I'm sure that most people would know how hard it is to do a PhD, or they'd guess at how hard it was anyway. People say to me that I must be very clever, but I don't think I'm any cleverer than the next person. I think the main thing that you need to do a PhD is sheer determination. You can usually spot a PhD on campus by just having their head hung, looking tired, with a stressed out look on their faces. I did feel a bit old doing a, starting a PhD with all these 20-something year olds and I was at about 38, I think. And I had to balance education with a home life being a single mum. I can honestly say I have no idea how I got through that PhD. I had several more spinal operations. My eldest son was almost successful in committing suicide. My mum was given a terminal diagnosis of cancer and the father of one of my boys was sent to prison. And to top that, I just got out of an abusive relationship. So when I say in my videos, when I talk about various subjects that I've been there and I've done that, you can believe me. You know, I've, I've been on the receiving end um, of some offences.
I am pleased to say that my son is here and so is my mum and she's cancer free and they're both doing great. So all of this led me to start up my own business so that I could bring the subject that I love to everybody and make it available to them. I produce loads of free content by writing blogs and doing videos such as this one. I've even made some of the online courses available for free because I just want to share my knowledge with you. I really want people to know my story, my background and my journey through education so that they can empower themselves so that you can know that it's possible to do this. People can achieve whatever they want to achieve. They're only limited by their own perceptions and their own thoughts. As Napoleon Hill wrote, whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. Of course, I know that there are some real life situations that you can't change by yourself, but the basic underlying message is, is that you can achieve most things that you set your mind to. Another reason for me starting Crime Psych was to teach people and show them that learning new subjects has real benefits in your life. I know that before I even started in education, before I even went to college, I would have very quickly said that I'm no good at learning. I can't go to university and I certainly can't do a PhD. Learning new subjects that interest you is really addictive and empowering. Starting my business is also a tiny bit self-indulgent. And this is because it was a true crime before I learned about psychology. I enjoy taking a close look at all of the gruesome details of a case, but now I can profile them and share it with you. In my day-to-day -day work, I do a wide variety of things, which mostly involves me sitting in front of a computer in a little office at home. I write psychological profiles on well-known offenders, and this involves me finding out everything uh, as much as I can about a particular offender and their history and their upbringing. And I then attempt to explain the psychological factors which will have led to that offender committing their offences. I tend to not include too many details of the actual crimes themselves because there are loads of true crime websites out there that you, if you want actual details of the case, they're already out there. So I tend to stick with the psychological profile of these offenders. I also write various blogs on different aspects of criminal psychology. And this is mainly because some people find the subject really interesting, but they can't spend, or they can't afford to spend years studying it. It can be quite expensive and you can't really justify leaving a full time job to go study a subject that interests you. When I'm doing this kind of work, I'll tend to play classical music or listen to rain or see background noises. And that's because I work from home and I'm so easily distracted. Um, so it's headphones on, it basically, if I want to get anything done. I've created some online courses so that people can learn from me in their own time. Everybody's so busy these days. You need something which is available when you've got a spare five or ten minutes. And these, the subjects of the courses are on various things such as how to spot a liar, getting inside the mind of a murderer, um, the basics of what offender profiling is, how to study it and more. So some of these are free because I wanted everybody to have the opportunity to learn and not everybody can afford to pay for that privilege. I've also been on a couple of true crime podcasts as a guest. When people listen to podcasts about true crime, they'll find it fascinating to hear about all of the details of the crime, but in the back of their mind, they may be questioning or wondering how could a person commit such violent and abhorrent crimes. I love talking about criminal psychology, so I really enjoy being invited on these. Another aspect of my work is that I go out and I do live face-to-face -face events and this sometimes involves speaking at schools, colleges or further education places on how research can be applied in the real world. I also host some mini seminars and workshops on offender profiling 
and on murderers and on liars. And I've also hosted a few events for charities doing what I've la what I've called the offender profiling experience. And in that event, I teach people the basics of how to profile somebody. Then I'll give them a hypothetical crime and some suspects, and they have to use their profiling skills to work out who did it. So everybody always enjoys taking part in those. Another part of my job is I am an assistant editor for an academic journal and that involves me reading, processing uh, new art journal articles which have been written and sending them out to reviewers uh, to, to come back and then once they're back I can advise them whether they should be published or not. I do love connecting with people so whenever you leave me a comment or or a question or even if you want to get in touch with me by email or whatever i'm on instagram facebook twitter uh, email on the website so get in touch with me i'd love i'd love to hear from you thanks for taking the time to watch this hope you found it interesting bye for now